Hey everyone, Katrina Sawa here with jumpstartyourbiznow.com and Jumpstart Publishing. And I have my friend Anke Herman here with Taming the Tech Monster. I said that right, right? You did say that perfectly, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, she's coming from Australia, yes? Well, I'm in Spain. I'm from Germany, but I live in Spain. I've lived in Spain. Australia, whatever. <laughs> okay. We are an international broadcast today. And today we're talking about um, tech reality check. So if you're an entrepreneur or a coach or consultant or anybody in an online business, you're probably like overwhelmed with so many different tech things that you can use in your business. So many of them are awesome. The goal is to be more efficient and more prof profitable, right? So you work less and make more. And so technology can allow us to do that. But I have so many clients all the time, and I'm sure you do too, Anki, that, um, just don't know what to do or they buy into the high-end thing so before we give some tips on the tech and what the real reality check is please tell people a little bit more about you and then i'll tell them about me for those people watching that don't know uh, one or two of us so <laughs> tell them where you, where you how you got started and what you're doing today yeah no well thanks for thanks for inviting me i was looking forward to this because you know we're gonna have fun <laughs> with the topic for sure for sure so i mean i'm basically well, i'm from germany originally but you know as we kind of quickly touched on i've moved around quite a bit but i've been in, in the south of spain for over 18 years now <laughs> so i'm not crazy and i'm also like i think it's kind of reflected also i'm one of those multi-passionate people started out as a linguist and i stumbled into software development while i was living in australia and I was like, I had all of them. Oh, I'm going to open this. And oh, no, I'm, I'm a girl. I'm not that technical. And, you know, and, and so it's all too hard. And I've had all of that until one day it dawned on me. And I thought, well, wait, programming language. It's a language. It's got vocabulary. And it's tiny. And it's got structure. So it's got grammar. And it's nice and rigid. <laughs> so basically, bottom line, it's just another language, just simpler. And that really opened up that world for me and all of a sudden like oh I know how to learn languages like so it, it helped me it helped me what problem bottom line I teach most of my clients is I help them see that I have what it takes to figure this out it doesn't mean there isn't a lot to learn but it's like yeah 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 but you can learn it like it's just another thing to learn and and there is no you know <laughs> tech monster basically but, um, you know, when I moved to Spain, I started my business like I needed to let my creative side out. So I ditched my, my software developer job and started a sewing business in Spain and I made flamenco costumes for many years. So that was like a big giant crash course in personal development and what to do in business and also what not to do. So now I've literally come around full circle and taken everything that I've learned about creating, about learning, about tech and about business to help my clients build their business online without the tech struggles and without you know basically getting sucked into the rabbit hole <laughs> yeah because tech can really help us but it can also hinder us if we don't understand it or don't get a little tech savvy so so for me i started my business 20 years ago back and i'm in northern california um and I used to be in advertising sales. I've been in sales and marketing jobs all my life, but I was in advertising sales for the local newspaper, you guys, back in, well, I don't know, 1999 to 20 or something like that. Anyways, it was so long ago, I can't even remember. But I fell in love with small business owners that just didn't know what they didn't know, right? And I always had to consult with them on other things they needed to do besides just running out of the paper because they just didn't know stuff. And so, I found, you know, after a couple of years of doing that, I'm like, oh my God, these business owners need help. So I jumped out and started my own business. And it was really just local stuff because there was no video, there was no social media, there was no online anything. I didn't even, I wouldn't even have known how to get a client, uh, you know, across the country or wherever. Um, so it was local networking, marketing, follow up, that kind of thing is how I started my business. And so the tech, I mean, I barely had a website in the beginning. I had an email, you know, list, and that was the tech back then. It's just an email list. It was so much simpler, but <clears throat> I wasn't making as much money as I am now, and I'm not reaching all the people that I can now. So tech can be a great thing. I had to learn it all along the way too, you know, and and some of it I pick up pretty easily, but others I don't. 
And so I, you know, I learned a lot and I've tried all kinds of different tech and I've invested tens of thousands of dollars in my technology and my people to help me set it up. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I want to save people money and time by going into the wrong things. So that's why I'm here today with you, because I think we need to just like, let's give them a reality check, what they need, what they don't need, what, um, what they need to pay for, what they don't need to pay for, and what's going to make their life easier, what's not going to make their life easier, and what, who to listen to and who not to listen to, right? So um, what are a couple, uh, what's like the number one thing that you usually like to share with clients um, when they first work with you? What is there something that you always share? Yeah, there's one question that is really the kind of tipping point in the middle and based on the answer to that question, everything else unfolds from that. And when they talk about an online program or like something that they want to offer, the first question is, have you sold it? Say it again. Whether I've, I asked them whether they've sold it before, whether they've yeah. sold, whether somebody has paid them for the thing, right? And because there's really... Well, there's basically, well, and I've learned this in software development, like literally when you think, okay, how software is built and how flamenco dresses are made and kind of anything's created, the process is always the same. So when you first have an idea, you need to kind of figure out whether this is just a nice idea or especially when you make a, want to make money from it, you need to first find out whether this is just a nice idea for you or whether other people actually want to pay money for this thing. Right? And so the big tipping point is that because until you know that for sure, in the fact, not because somebody said I would pay for this, but somebody actually has paid for it, you're in my books, you're in the validation phase and you want to keep tech as simple as you possibly can. doesn't mean you shouldn't use tech tools, but you just use what you have. You use what you have. Or, you know, obviously there are, you know, if you need some stuff, well, there are recommendations for that. But you want to keep that as light as possible, right? Versus, okay, now I have sold it. So I know for sure I'm onto something. The task now not is like to find the first soul to pay me for it. The task now is to how can I make this thing efficient? How can I turn this into a mechanism that allows me to serve more people without ending up spending my time with silly admin stuff that is error prone and manual and annoying for everybody. So now the task is, okay, how can I choose tech in a strategic way to make this whole thing efficient so that if I ever wanted to scale and really grow, I'm in a position to do that. So the key question is where you at? And most yes. people, somebody actually said this really nicely, they said most people want to build a widget factory before they've ever sold a widget. Right. Right. Because it's easier to get, be behind the scenes preparing and planning and prepping than it is to be out marketing and selling and, you know, it, be having exposure. It is 10 times easier. And I catch people, so many people doing that. Well, I'm preparing to launch. I'm preparing my website. I'm preparing this. Well, just go live with it. Right. And I would agree with you that um, sometimes people get into high-end technology before they have a proven thing to sell. Don't do that. But like a membership is a, a prime example or an online training. Like you want to create a, a, an online training or course, they'll go buy course software. They'll spend all this money setting up the course and the software. Haven't sold a single one yet. That's and they fun. will go and then and then they'll launch the thing and maybe sell it, maybe not, right? Yeah. So I say sell it messy, sell it messy first, right? That's exactly what I, that, I mean, that's exactly what I mean when I say like yeah. validate the thing first. Because at the end of the day, you always need the three parts to it. You need to have a mechanism to deliver the thing. You need to have a mechanism to sell the thing and you need to have a way to offer it to other people. Now, yeah. how complex that gets depends like if you just need to see whether you can actually sell the thing well when it comes to offering it to people you sell it to the people you already know you just send an email you pick up the phone you say hey i've got this thing i think you might like it do you wanna do you wanna have a look like that that's your like you want to use the people you already know now the selling thing like how do they pay you here's a paypal like my paypal link do me a bank transfer 
that the delivery could be on email, it could be a Zoom call, like it can be low tech, no tech, super simple. But I think what you really need is those first sales. Because yes. otherwise, you might build this big castle that nobody wants to live in. And that's a really, really typical, <clears throat> typical problem. That And it, it works. I mean, it, it's, it's part of this, the procrastination thing. But the other part, it's also people get bombarded, like, oh, you need a funnel and you need this and scale with webinars and there's all these things. And people often find this situ find themselves in the situation, well, I have this idea for this course, for this program, and now I need all this stuff. The perception is that they need all this stuff before they can start. So basically the message is, no, you don't. Yeah, I agree. And so, you know, yes, there's some amazing software out there that can help you run your course or do a group program and all that. But the time it's going to take you to set that up or get comfortable with the tech is going to slow you down from making the money. So I always say make the money first. Yeah, at least make a few sales. Um, I usually recommend you, they use their website. So I always say that your website is the hub of your business. It's the oh, hub. Yeah. Now. Did I ever do landing page software and funnel software? I have, but am I in that now? No, because it is very constricting. And if you want to do a lot of different things, you have to create so many things over there that it's very time consuming. Whereas if I use my website, which is on WordPress, mind you, because it's super simple and it also, when you learn it, it's simple. But also, I can clone pages quickly, change a bunch of things, change an opt-in form or change a button and go live with it probably in 10 minutes. So, I mean, I do everything through my website and um, I do have some landing pages, but we're moving them out because it's just not effect because I don't, the email marketing system and the CRMs that we use change often. You might change those kind of often. There's too many out there right now. And when you buy into them, you find, oh, this one, I don't like this one anymore. Or I, you know, or this one, like I was in a couple who, where I lost a bunch of subscribers because the, a lot of people on that platform were spamming people. And so my email address got associated with people who were spammers on this one platform. Therefore, a lot of my emails got spammed and then I lost a bunch of subscribers. I went from like 14,000 subscribers to four one time, one year, a few wow. years ago. And it was painful. And I'm, but you know, sometimes you got to clean up your list and stuff, but still I was like, ah, that's you cool. know? yeah. And it and was a great point to say, well, you want to, I always say like pay, pay, play in somebody else's backyard or you want to don't build your house there. Right. And normally I think of social media when I say that, but you just brought up a point that's really relevant to that sense. Like, yeah, even in your platforms might change. So if you have to rebuild everything from scratch and it's so tempting I have all rank posts on the like all in one platforms. Like there's nothing wrong with all in one platforms. They just quite often position their offer a little bit misleading. Like, you know, as if they kind of present as if the thing does all the tech for you. And in my experience, complexity is a little bit like energy. Like you can shift it and it can transform, but it never goes anywhere. Like if that thing does a lot, it will be complex. Like don't be fooled by any. One who says, oh, our system does everything and it's super simple. Like, no, either it does everything or it's simple. Like, it cannot be both. And if you spend so much so much time fiddling, and that's a rabbit hole, because quite a lot of these tools have a bit of quite a learning curve, especially when this tech stuff isn't your thing. Like, the learning curve is dramatic, right? And um, it's just a rabbit hole to go in. Right. So let's talk about some of the reality checks. You do, what are you, the top three things people need? I say a website, a CRM, or a place to do email marketing that also can have opt-in boxes and stuff and autoresponders, and then a video platform, right? So like Zoom. I mean, seriously, you can run a business with those three things and nothing else and succeed and make tens of thousands of dollars a month. Cool. What do cool. you say? What you do know, you I'm, My list would look very similar, like to start out, I'd even like to look, when I look at the way email marketing systems function these days, you could even get away without a website at the beginning. Not all the, like, yes. you can have your one-page website nice and pretty 
as a landing page of your email marketing system. So you could even get away with without a website for a bit, but email yeah. marketing is first. Yes, Zoom, like no doubt about that. One thing I wish I'd caught on a little sooner <laughs> was actually a tool to help you stay organized. Because mm. this is usually something that you tend to think of only when you already have, you know, you kind of here and stuff falls through the cracks because you forget oh yeah boy i was meant to send my bio and now i'm no longer invited to that podcast because i didn't send the thing i right? yeah. so, or like oh i was supposed to check in with so and so or hey can you promote my thing oh well i don't know right so this yes. part like something like you know i don't know um, a task management thing that is easy to feed something so that kind is of easy to feed. are you talking so, about well i'm talking click up click up's my favorite at the moment <laughs> you know i'm a bit of a Oh, there so I can change yeah. that. that can change click up is my absolute favorite but uh you know there's um there's a bunch of them there's you know people work with Asana and Trello and whatever what, whatever it is it doesn't really kind of matter that much which one it is but just use something and get yeah. used to using that early before you need it before you are you you have the water up to here because then it also helps you work with other people because you yes. can basically everything's in one place tasks get like stuff gets done quicker because you don't have to, oh, where did I save that document? I don't know, was it completely, like you don't have any of that. Everything's in one place. You, the, the amount of headspace it frees up, that surprised me most when I really started to kind of use a tool like that, that the amount of headspace, you get an email, you know you need to do something with it, but not now. You pop it on the system and that's the thing, when you have one like ClickUp where you can have like a, a little integration where out of your email you just send it straight over so you don't even have to it's easy to feed I, it's always important for me but then you can you know you put it your your date on it and then you know you can forget about it you know exactly it isn't going to fall through the cracks it's a lifesaver and it's helpful because it will take a while if you're not used to working out of your calendar and getting organized and so it's it takes a little bit of getting used to so you don't want to do that when you're already super stressed so you want to do that when you're still chilled and get into the habit of of, of being organized. So that would definitely yeah. be on the list for me. And and you make a good point. I mean, my, one of my team members last year used ClickUp, and it was great for her. Now I'm not a fan of using those online platforms. Um, so there's different personalities, right? So know your personality. Exactly. Some people are more linear focused and and will get into those and love it, but be careful because those types of people tend to often stay there too long. Like you stay on your click up organizing things too much and you're <laughs> not in the sales yeah. and marketing, right? Oh boy, yes, I've seen that too. I mean okay. it's about cold again. That's true. But That's it's true. awesome. Yes. Now I my other team member, like I have assistants. I have like four different assistants right now. And I have for the last 10 years or so, just various different ones. They all use different things. One uses Asana. Um, I think another one, a, a previous used Basecamp. Those kinds of online platforms are great for organizing your stuff, like you said, and the tasks and the projects at hand and all the different things that you have to do per project. I actually create like usually a little mind map and then show it to my team and then say, you guys go organize it and I'll just be over here doing the creative stuff, right? So know your personality know who should be taking care of your tech because those things are great and my team uses them i don't use them so you might use them anka but then that's perfect yeah. so like know if you're going to use them great i like yeah. to put some of my tasks on just my google calendar i like to keep it as simple as possible so i put things on google calendar i think both things are awesome so know which one you're going to do i learned about six years into my business, um, hiring certain types of virtual assistants and things that I just, there was certain stuff I didn't want to do. And you have to get to that point because otherwise you won't be making a lot of money every month. It'll be way too hard to make a lot of money every month if you're trying to be the tech team, the, you know, the HR, oh, wow. the, all the different things. So, yes. And I love well, the I, point you're making. I really, really love the pain of the point you're making. And see, that's what I like. This is really how I operate with everything. It's like, it's very much on a sort of a functional level. Like, you need to be organized, right? And if that yes. works, if, if you work best of your paper calendar, of your journal, well, use that, 
right? If you want to use a platform that does it all, like use that. But I mean, just think about and be conscious about it. How do you stay organized? How are you going to manage an increase in workload? Right? That's yeah. the question. And there's a million answers to it. And it's about, as you said, it's about finding out how you tick, how you best learn. And see, that's why I always say it's like it's a real crash course in personal growth. Like you get to know yourself better than <laughs> in any other way. And the same applies for, you know, for how to deliver an, an online course or, or like whatever you do. It's always the same thing. Well, yes, you need to find a way to deliver what you've sold. There's yes. There's ways of doing it. You know, and yes. marketing is like there's a million way of connecting with people and telling them about what it is you do for them. And that's the thing. Within that, you can get creative. I agree. Let's talk about um, scheduling software because that's probably a, the biggest thing that's that's that encompasses our world today when we're scheduling calls and having people schedule calls with us. Um, and there's so many out there. People ask me all the time, which one should I use? I'm like, it really doesn't matter. Like pick one that you like, right? Um, that you find easy to use. I personally have one that my assistant knows how to update, right? And I don't, I learned a little bit, but it takes me too long to figure it out. So I just delegate stuff to her. Um, but the reason that I chose the one that I'm in is because it allows me to have two calendars and two calendars in two different places so that I can send prospects and clients over here and joint venture partners and collaborative type of partners over here. I don't want them to see each other's calendar and I want different availability for those people. So a lot of calendars don't do that, different availability. Like you, if you have them all in one. So that's why I chose mine. So I had to figure out the function that I needed first before choosing the calendar. Right. What and that the one I use is schedule once. But what what do you what do you like? Well, it's the same. It's exactly that. It's like the, the clearer you are on what it is you want this thing to do, you know, and that's why that's why when this on and the, and the scheduling one as a, such a sort of a small like task, it's really easy to be clear on that. The same is true if you want to run a big program. Right. The clearer you are on how you want this to run and what you want people to receive and how. So I like schedule one too because I like I, I really like the the um, flexibility of creating different pages with different appointment types. So it's really it's one of those where you have to get your head around a little bit, but once you do, it's really powerful. Um, yeah, I think what the one thing that I find I watch out for is how well does it play with the other tools, the other toys I use. Right, there is one that I really like. It's called zcal.co. And it's super simple. It's really pretty. It's really user like nobody has messed up time zones with it. So that's always one of those things. And um, it has some really funny little, like, but they're really new still. What I like about it, it is has a wonderful function for finding a time. You know, like the doodle polls when you find a time that works for a bunch of people. It does that in a super slick, elegant, ad-free, destruction-free way. So I really like it for that. Now, the downside is they're so new. They haven't got any integration yet that like you cannot notify your CRM when somebody's made a call. So it's not the main thing I would use at this point. They go, you know, they're working on it. So this is one of the, the things that I watch out for that if, if somebody makes a booking, can I send, you know, do they have an integration or do they play with Zapier or is there a way for me to send that contact over, especially when it's for prospects, right? Yes, so that's, I agree. That's something that, that I look out for. I agree. I've been in this one software since probably the beginning of time. Um, and I left it for a little bit and came back. And it's never changed in 17 years. Never updated. But it's it's my favorite technology. I wish they would just update it and make it integratable with all these other things. And they haven't. I'm like, oh, epic fail. Because... It is the best software I've found and so easy to use and easy to create products. A lot of times when, uh, for, for me and some coaches that I know, we just, you know, people get onto a call with us and then we might make them a special offer, like not our standard. So we have to, so sometimes I'm on the phone with somebody and I'm in my cart just adding a product real quick at a certain price point that I just made an offer for. And then boom, I have a link like within a minute. And it's that fast, but many 
they made it too complicated now with a lot of the carts that you have to create a workflow and you have to create a product and then you have to link it to this and you have to link it to that. I'm like, oh my God, it takes like a half an hour to create a product. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And that's one of my, one of my biggest pet peeves about most of the new softwares is all the workflows and campaigns that make it so hard to actually just sell something quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all about the funnel, which works. It works, but when you're in a sales, well, it works for a specific kind of of, of it offer. Right? Right. It works for like a it works for sort of a one to many. Like if you set up your thing and then you have an yeah. email from him that goes there, that kind right. of setup does not work well for you selling on the phone, like mm -mm. right? where you want to make up something on the fly. So it doesn't work for that, right? So it's like this is also, yeah. And I've been through a lot of different platforms where I was like, you know. I do have the group offers, but I also have these one-to-ones. Like, I need something where I could have, like, a client portal thing. Like, it's sort of forever. It's like you never – this is the other part. I think this is the other point to keep in mind that the perfect piece of software, you're probably going to have to build it yourself. Like, there will be always something that you don't like. And there will always be something something won't have. Like, you know, it's like, it's like with real relationships. At the end of the day, you have to kind of make a decision and then – make the most of it until you find, you know, you find, <laughs> you find a better one. And it's true. Oh. And please don't build it yourself because there's probably somebody. No, I know. That was a joke. Yeah. Unless I mean, even I wouldn't think of that. It's like, oh, no, no this does not sound like a good project. I but know. it's just saying it's like it's not going to, you know, if you go and jump from platform to platforms every time there is a little pet peeve, you know, it's like, yeah, there will be, okay, this is a showstopper. I just cannot work like that if it doesn't have that. Oh, fine, right? But if, um, you know, there will always be, there will always be There's something. always something you won't like yeah. about a certain software. Yeah. I found. There's always I something. Actually, like, those, like, when this gets a little more complex, that really show, but it really also opens up, like, it shows the other problem that often people have. Yeah. It's when they, especially when they don't like the tech stuff. Like, this, you know, when they do like it, they go down the rabbit hole. They spend all their time fiddling with different platforms, right? Now, the people who don't particularly like tech stuff, when they have sold their thing and they've done the first, like, okay, I just kind of send, put stuff in a Google Drive and we're off and just make those quick sales. When they're now ready to sort of offer it to more people, I literally had people come to me and she goes, oh, well, you know, I've got this program, people really like it. And I'm like, well, why don't you offer it again? And she goes, oh, just the thought, just the thought of, I don't know, like when some, they have to set this up and then when somebody signs, I have to do this. And I'm like, what on earth are you doing? Yeah, that same spreadsheet that works okay when you work with five people, it's going to kill you when you try and run a group with 50 on, on the back of that. Like then all of a sudden the same tool that works fine and that same, oh, just make me a bank transfer. You know, that then becomes the stumbling block when you yeah. try and serve more people because then you have to sit there, hover, over your account all day to see who paid. And if they don't put the proper subject line in, you don't even know who it is. Right? So yeah. then you end up creating this manual error prone admin nightmare, you know, and then, you know, hiring somebody else for help because they're going to mess it up too. You know, so it's just like, that's the place when you really want to think about and say, well, take out some time, just like you want to take out some time to work on your business and not just running on the, on the hamster wheel. It's like to think through, Okay, what do I need and what stack will make that possible for me? So I'll say two things to that. First of all, I agree. What happens with most people is they get into man what I call manual labor chaos. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're trying to do too many things personally, one-on-one -on -one with all the leads that are coming through. And so we have to automate, delegate, and systematize a lot of the lead gen. Okay, before you even get to talk to them or touch them, they need to go through a few hoops. It doesn't have to be a workflow or a campaign, however. It could be some different pages. It could be an opt-in. It could be sending out your regular emails. Um, I think what's important is connecting and with that audience and really nurturing that relationship because they you want them to finally raise their hand to say, I think I want to talk to you now, or it's time. Like I've watched your videos, I've read your blog, I've read your senior emails, I see what you're doing, I've seen all your stuff on your website. Some people say they've spent two hours watching my YouTube videos. I'm like, what? Like two hours? And then they'll be like, yep, 
ready to go. Let's go. Right. And then they're more of a qualified person to talk to, you know, and yes, you don't have to have an assistant like me right off the bat. I didn't. I had to learn more, though, and I had to do more myself. Um, but it is nice to, as soon as possible, start delegating certain things, especially with your tech, because you're, it's, if you're running a coaching business or something, that is your expertise. The tech is not your expertise. So learn, I say just enough to be dangerous. See, with, that's what I say too. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, don't be that client who gets ripped off because you don't know. Don't be that client who is a nightmare client because you don't get anything. Like know enough to be a good client for somebody. Right. And I think it's also build, like you cannot outsource a system that doesn't exist yet. You know, so that idea of, oh, I don't have a clue and I don't want to deal with it. Like, you know what I call fear-based outsourcing? Yeah. And you I just can. dump it onto a virtual assistant who has neither back, like access nor overview. Like they don't have your vision because virtual assistants, they do have the skills to help you on, you know, quite often, you know, some, some are more mechanical than others. But most of the time, they don't know enough about you and your business to build the system mm -hmm. for you. You know, you are not just because you don't know how it works. Oh, I just get somebody else to do it. That won't work. You know, like you need to build out how this should function or give somebody the enough, like work with them to really build that system before somebody else can yes. operate it. You do need, sometimes you need someone on the outside looking in though and discovering what you're doing and then being able to give suggestions. That's oh, something I do. Yeah. I know you probably do that too. And yeah. it's just so important because you just don't see what you don't see. You don't see what's missing. I call it the holes and the opportunities in your business. There's holes where the systems don't work, where there's breaks in automation, where lead gen is coming in and then stops here because there's a hole. There's a broken system, right? And then there's opportunities for really turning on that marketing hose and pulling in a lot more people, but people are so scared because they don't they have manual labor chaos in the back end. So but you don't know what you don't know. And so I would say be careful, too, on getting into expensive software or lifetime software and then thinking you have to stay in that, right? Yeah. Because even if you buy into something early on and it ends up not being the thing you need, I mean, people are out there selling technologies with making huge commissions in the back end. They don't care if you're in it or if you're in the wrong one. So be careful. Like, really yeah. get some advice on how to strat strategically choose which technology i want you to do it the most affordable way possible so i'm always looking for like asking questions like what are you selling what's your personality what what kind of clients how do you want to sell and then okay then i recommend this this and this right Absolutely. so yeah and I, I agree like actually like when i actually i, I wrote a little rant like a little a giant rant post on linkedin recently where it was like what to watch out for before you like sign up, especially all in like big chunky all in one platforms. And one of the things, one of the crucial giant red flags is when you're in a webinar where you didn't like, I've seen those, you know, when you get to the webinar and it's supposed to be about lead magnets, like you're not coming there to buy software. Like you think you get taught about lead magnets, right? And next thing you know, what's on offer is actually the software that does it all, right? And it's today's special offer, spend a bunch of money on a week, on a year long commitment on software that you haven't even seen. Like, no, you know, it's like whatever, even if the software is really like, oh, this looks really good. I will always go six months on a monthly plan. If, you know, when I know, and I know this thing inside out, inside out, and really think, well, yeah, this works for me. By all means, go save some money by the annual plan, but not because also you not. If somebody demos it with demo data, you know, perfect little situation, you're not going to know whether this works for you until you try to do your work with it, right, and see whether it actually works for you. So if you're locked into something for a year, if you, you know, if somebody tries to force you to lock you in for a year, like I'd say, like run <laughs> quickly and like don't. It's it's never in your best interest. Well, we need to probably tell them like how to get a hold of us, right? So um, go ahead, Anki, tell them like, I know you have a book and all that kind of stuff. So what would you suggest they do next? Well, I suggest they go to tamingthetechmonster.com and there's a free copy of my book. And once you're on my email list, you get hold of me in all kinds of different ways. So that would be the way to go. Yeah, your book. 
So download your free copy of her book at Taming the Tech Monster. Oh, Taming the Yay. Tech Monster. <laughs> and that little dragon, like he really says it all. It's like what looks like a scary monster is really just a friendly dragon that wants to play. So don't let him scare you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's so key. And uh, I love that. And it's probably simplified, right, for people who aren't that techie. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Awesome. And I would say if you want to check out my stuff, I do have um, a, uh, la, 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 la. I have a bunch of free stuff on my website. If you go to jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings. So I'm really about this, creating the system and the process that you want to take people through. So from the initial lead gen to the marketing, the follow up and the sales process, how to really get stuff sold. So how to sell. And so I look at your website, your offers, what you're selling, your price points, your mindset, how you want to sell that. And there's a few free trainings in there. One about your website, one about speaking, one about jumpstarting your business and your marketing. Um, there's a lot of different things depending on what you, what your goals are. There's also a need number worksheet in there. That's actually good because a lot of times people that I talk to have really low money goals. And when I say they think they're high, they think, Oh, I'm going to make six figures, a hundred thousand. Okay. That's $8,333 a month. <clears throat> but then they're selling something for like $200. I'm like, well, that's going to be a difficult situation for you. Right. Why not have a $10,000 program and make sell one a month, I mean, or more, right? And so it's getting yourself to that mindset, knowing you're worth it. So there's a lot of stuff there that we have to unpack and um, totally. so you can. You know, yeah. I always say what looks like a tech problem never is. Like, it's always something else. And it's once that's process. clear, you know, well, exactly, it's the process. It's what are you saying? Like, what is it that you actually try and do and how, right? And then once the clearer that gets, the more obvious the best tools and the best systems become. So it's always a lot more, people are always surprised how little technical that actually is, right? So it's people usually quite, oh, I didn't think it was that much fun, right? Yeah, good. Well, this has been fun. It's been fun talking to you. And, you know, hopefully those of you watching have gotten some good ideas. Um, you know, it's it's hard to give tech advice on something like this because I say, you know, unless we ask you questions about your business, what you're selling, price point, how comfortable you are, it's hard to advise you. And so if people are advising you on which tech you need and, and without even talking to you or asking you questions about your business, I would run the other way and not get what they say. But we're happy to have conversations with you to find out more and then give you the right advice for you absolutely right? absolutely so yeah, the best answer the one word answer is always it depends <laughs> it depends uh -huh. and i know you don't like to hear that people but it with this it depends so if someone's saying oh you've got to do xyz and that's the only one i would ever recommend now i'm like ah i don't know like i wouldn't do it so thanks for being here well thank you so much for having me this was loads of fun <laughs> Yeah. And yes, yeah. I hope I hope somebody people got some insights and some like, oh okay, well this yeah. is actually not as overwhelming as the it tech. Seems. You do have to embrace the tech though, you guys. We're yeah. in I mean it's crazy. This this whole bit world revolves around tech now, so you have to embrace it. And uh so we'll talk to you and soon. It's just slowing down, you know, it's like when when you when it's hard, you're skipping steps, it's like anything, just slow down one step at a time. Yep. Thank you, Anki. Thank Have you. a good day, you guys. You too.